Hi, this is Stuart Shumway. This video clip explains how to create a cumulative percentile graph in Google Sheets. One reason for using cumulative percentile graphs is to analyze graphically large amounts of data. Uh, the ACT is one of those things at our school where we've had tons of data to analyze to look at, and so maybe that's one example to use. There's four well, let's use four different categories and a hundred different students. So that's a lot to look at. Um, you might look at averages. Doesn't tell us too much. Maybe the English is a little lower. Let's look at a cumulative percentile graph and see if we can see a little more. So if we type in equals to do a calculation, PER for percent. Percentile rank, let's select that one, and it tells us how to set it up to data, value, and then significant digits. So the data, let's do math first. So click on the first cell in that column. I'll scroll down to the last cell in that column. I'll hold shift and click the mouse, and I'm going to hit comma to move to the value. So I'll scroll up to the value and I'll select, well, let's use a score of 7 to start with. Comma, let's do two significant digits. You might think it didn't work. It's just that there's no scores of seven or below in the math category. There is one in English, and so we'll keep the seven. Um, but now to copy and paste that equation or that formula function, let's uh, freeze the row two. So let's put a dollar sign in front of the two and a dollar sign in front of the row 101. So we'll always be using from row 2 to row 101. Um, we'll let the columns move because we'll scoot over. But we want this column to stay the same, the score column. So we'll put a dollar sign in front of that. So now I can select that corner of that cell and make a bunch like that all the way down to a score of 36 on the ACT. There weren't any students that scored above 33 in math. So 100% are below that value. And so if I grab the corner here and do English and reading and all that, now let's see what they look like in a chart. So if I insert a chart, it thinks I want a scatter chart, that's fine. Um, but it, it has one for the score versus the score. So let's remove that guy. He just changes the auto scaling so it's hard to read. There we go, that's pretty decent. I have one here already made up with um, a little larger text so you can see it easier. You can also see that I flipped it over. In this example here, um, English having a higher value made some of the people that reviewed this for me think that English was our, high, our best area. So what I did is I said, okay, instead of saying percentage of students below that score or that score or below, let's change that so that it's the percentage of students at that score or above. And so... The way I did that is I said instead of saying equals percent rank, I said equals one minus the percent rank. So it just changed, flipped it over. So either way, whatever you're trying to present, it may change what the way you want to display that. But anyways, we're able to see quite a large difference between English and math, for example, at a score of 15. So some of the students that on the lower end, there's quite a large difference there. And so you might say that as a school we did better meeting the needs of those with lower math skills than we did meeting their English needs. Anyways, you, there's just some things you can see in an, on a cumulative percentage graph that are hard to see if you just look at straight averages and things like that.